Hello, we're looking today at a often requested steel. This one is called Sleipner steel. This is a commonly used steel by Lion Steel. Lion Steel will generally use Sleipner D2 or Nylox in their lower or more standard price knives and then in their higher end knives they will use M390. Um, Lion Steel have gone and said they think that they can get edge retention on Sleipner as good as on M390. Um, I'd be surprised, but you know, that's what we're here for. We're edge testing this knife. Um, the thing about it is, well, first I'll talk about Sleipner. So, uh, the elements of Sleipner, the things that it is comprised of, reading straight from the Z Knives uh, Knife Info app, is 0.9% carbon, 0.5% vanadium, 7.8% uh, chromium, 2.5% molybdenum, 5% magnesium. Uh, some questionable amounts of phosphor and sulfur and 0.9 silicon. So, uh, let's have a look, I'll make sure I've got those right. Yep, manganese, phosphorus, sulfur, silicon, yeah. Uh, then conversely, we'll look at D2, which is, um, so D2 is 1.5% carbon, so it's a higher carbon. It's 0.9 to 1.1% vanadium. Chromium, 11 to 12%. Um, and everything else is so trace that it's probably not hugely variable, but you know, points. I'll, I'll put these up on the screen anyway as I'm going. Um, they often say this is a version of D2 steel. Um, it's definitely a modification, as you see by the decrease in chromium and um, the decrease in um, carbon as well. So, uh, interesting to see how that goes. It's actually rather chemically different to D2. So, slap in the steel. Um, I'll be testing it through um, a workshop 20 degree edge and then I'll be putting a 20 degree V-bevel Lansky edge on it. This is a pretty tall blade and it comes in a largely flat grind. It's a little bit thicker on the stock. The thing about this one, I was going to test the factory edge, but the factory edge, it's not particularly consistent. Not enough that I would do an edge test on it. There are some nicks and bites, a bit of a dull spot towards the front. So I'll be skipping the factory edge portion. It's a bit teary, a bit teary already. So there won't be a factory edge test because it came with like more of a broad edge, probably a very strong edge and still a sharp edge, but just not an edge that's really conductive to my tests. Anyway, I've spoken enough. I'll quite uh, efficiently from now on just label what I'm doing. I'll also probably finish with a um, toughness test against some brick and then a uh, rust resistance test. So stay tuned, slap the seal. Answers ahoy.
so some time has passed and I've done all my tests. So first of all, what I did was a acknowledging that the factor edge just wasn't going to cut it, so to speak. I jumped straight to doing a workshop edge test. What I did to steepen the edge angle, and I very rarely use this belt, I used the green workshop belt first. And that took a bit of, or quite a bit of material off the um, um, edge, making it a sort of taller uh, angle convex rather than what really was quite a thick convex like this. So that did a good job of making it slice you know, better than the factory edge ever did. And then when I did the um, uh, edge test, I uh, found that it did very, very well. Well, well for a uh, non-powder steel. Um, the edge workshop result was moderate. It was about, a, it was 105, uh, which is about on par with D2. It's a little bit less than D2, but then the steel has quite a bit less carbon in it. Um, yeah, it's got some other stuff that will help it, but um, from what I understand, this might be more geared towards being a tough steel rather than a edge retaining steel. So, uh, interesting result. But yeah, 105 cuts with the workshop edge. So that will be like the official score that goes with all the other ones. Because, you know, I was pretty happy that using the green belt, I took it up, made it a, um, a steeper, or a sh I guess a shallower, steeper, yeah, steeper edge bevel. And um, did, that did the trick. Uh, the next thing I did was I put on a proper edge with a... Um, a Lansky system. So I used the three diamond stones and then I used the 600 grit, 1000 grit, 2000 grit and then the leather strop and that got a quite a nice sort of almost mirror polished edge on it and that did 182 cuts in the um, in the rope cutting test. So that really did boost the results as has been the um, the common sort of case with most of the um, edges that I do. The workshop edge does put a durable or robust edge that doesn't quite retain absolute slicing sharpness for as long. Um, the V grind edge keeps that real absolute sharpness for a bit longer, but then seems to go what you would call dull quicker. It's kind of like a, you can have it all or nothing, or you can have it sort of in the middle with the convex. So I think that um, it's a pretty good edge retaining still for a non-powder metal. Absolutely nothing um, bad about it whatsoever. Um, I'm sure if you um, sharpened it and if you know honed in your ideal angle, it could probably go a bit steeper than 20 degrees, which is what I did with the Lansky. It could probably go to about 18 or so degrees because I did find in my next test, it is a rather tough steel. So what I did was I um, taped off the blade, which was the part that I did my Lansky so I sort of swapped. So when I did my Lansky edge test, I taped off uh, the rear part of the blade and uh, only cut with the front part of the blade. And then what I did after that was I taped off the front part of the blade just so I could use the microscope and you know, identify where I did my uh, tests. So for the toughness test, I just pressed the knife at you know, moderate strength, sort of just to simulate like an overstrike or something into the um, edge of a, a windowsill tile. So ceramic um, and yeah that usually takes you know pretty reasonable chips out of the blade um, I did a before and after looking at the edge on the microscope and I really struggled to find um, much damage at all um, to the edge and that was with the Lansky edge so I could only imagine with the convex edge it comes with it's probably very very difficult to damage or roll the edge um, even with you know a much more delicate edge which is what a V grind edge is um, over a convex at least um, the damage was really minimal and especially compared with what I've seen before doing that test um, the gouges taken out are really really slight and I have no doubt I'll be able to quite easily uh, iron them out no worries at all with a couple of different Lansky stones I think it'll be absolutely fine so that was cool uh, and then lastly I did a edge retention test so what I did was I mixed up some seawater solution so I mixed up about three and a half grams per hundred mils of uh, salt stirred that around in a cup and then I um, just put a big blob of water on the knife face and it just sat there. Uh, I checked back in on it after an hour and then after three hours and then after four and a half hours I um, have just taken it off just now because I'm about to go to bed. Didn't want it to eat a complete hole in my knife because it looked like that might have been what was going to happen because as you can see both in the clip running now and also on the knife in front of you it's kind of got this proper spot of corrosion there like that's that's not wiping off so it's like a black spot i could probably sand it out um yeah it's a little bit rough to the touch so yeah that's proper corrosion that's happened there after a few hours that's kind of to simulate i would guess sitting in a tackle box or something similar 
Uh, again, uh, one interesting thing I do notice between non-powder steels and powder steels is the non-powder steels often do rust like this unevenly. And my theory is that because it's not a uniform or homogenized structure, uh, I think you probably do get the, you know, the elements might not be as evenly distributed. This might be where there's less chromium uh, in this sort of portion of the blade here. I don't know, is that possible? It could well be. Um, and it is why you get sort of um, you know, edge differentiation and you know, some parts of the blade often you'll find that it's really hard to, you might get carbide tear out or you know, it's the powder metal, powder metallurgy and, and micro melt metallurgy can sort of seem to get everything spread out a bit evenly, more evenly rather than your traditional steels. So anyway, I think that might be the case, but it's rusted, you know, as you would expect of a tall steel. Not as crazy as a pure carbon steel. Um, it's a tall steel, so it does have a bit of chromium and a bit of other stuff in there to help resist. So yeah, it's generally most rust resistant are the carbon steels. Tall steels are about in the middle, and then you get your stainless steels. And then you get like your stainless powder metals, and then you get your nitrogen steels, which pretty much won't rust. So yeah, slap now, what do I think of it? Well, it's definitely not bad. It's... Um, just different. It just seems like they've gone, this seems like it's better for maybe, probably make a really good fixed blade steel. Um, uh, it's better for like, I guess a hard use folder, which is what they seem to put it in. This is in line steel's opinion, like a hard use folder. In my opinion differs slightly. Uh, some elements of it, um, perhaps, namely the grip. This is one of the least comfortable knives I've had to do my um, edge testing in so far because as soon as my hands were sweaty it was just pulling straight out of my hand and finding it really hard to keep a good grip on it um, over repetitive cutting and repetitive cutting is something that a hard use knife is supposed to be able to do so I found that interesting but anyway this the philosophy from Lion Steel is this is a hard to use knife so I think slightly steel is a good choice for that uh, it's certainly going to chip out on you um, I can't even see the little chip so you have to literally look at a bit of microscope to be able to see them oh, maybe if you really really peer at the edge. I don't think I'd be even be able to bring that up in a camera. And this whole edge just still feels sharp and I think I can still, yeah, I can still shave arm here with it as well. So really tough steel, really, really impressive toughness. Edge retention is probably on the lesser side compared to D2. D2 can often be a bit more um, brittle, but holds its edge for a lot longer, so. Uh, so yeah, it's definitely mid-range, um, definitely not M390 like they've supposed, um, maybe it has the toughness of it, but I don't think it has the edge retention. No matter what edge you put on it, um, M390 with a workshop edge did over 300 cuts. Um, and this with its sort of ideal, with like a more ideal polished Lansky edge, 180, which nothing to snort, nothing to snort at. Even the 105, as I always say, 105 rope cuts, that equates to a lot of actual like life use, especially if you're just everyday carrying it, you know, using it to open you know, food packages and um, envelopes and cardboard boxes and stuff so still a good result anyway i hope you've enjoyed this very long awaited uh, test on slap the steel uh, i'm going to go and try and patch the knife up as best i can it looks a bit horrible now it's got a rust spot it's got workshop scratches it's got some little chips somewhere along there it probably needs a new edge <laughs> it's um i hope you enjoy the um i hope you enjoy these tests because they certainly do knock a few few dollars off the old resale, val resale value all right guys catch you in the next one Thank <laughs> you.